Three years ago, in February 2020, I traveled to Italy to find my dream holiday home. And I did. However, little did I know that two weeks later, a pandemic would hit and close the world down. Luckily, the buyer's agent I used, which I'll come on to a bit later in this video, was instrumental in helping me with tons of paperwork, mostly in Italian, and eventually completing and closing on my little Italian house, finally, in November 2020. But due to the pandemic, I wasn't able to visit my little Italian house until the following year, in 2021. And when I was finally allowed to Italy, well, I discovered something rather wonderful another room in the house that the seller's agent forgot to show me, which of course made my little Italian house that much better. But more on that discovery and renovation in a bit. As we all know, things in 2021 were still a bit tricky. So most of that year was spent having the designs drawn up, sourcing materials, and finding brilliant flea market furnishings because if you've been following my little Italian house journey for a while, you know how much time I've spent scouring through these glorious treasure troves to find the perfect thing for each room. But finally, renovation on my little Italian house officially started in early 2022. So here I am one year after the renovations have started and I'm bringing on a guest as well today because I thought you could ask me some questions about how it's all going. But many of you, when I started this renovation project saying, did I buy this um, on my own and did I move away from Mapperton? And the answer is no. I'm still here at Mapperton doing lots of renovation projects here. And, but I did buy it. Uh, without telling you, your husband <laughs> yes one day julie came down and said i've bought a house fantastic so so i've been there a couple of times and i have to say the location is extraordinary the house is beautiful it's needed a lot of work and julie has been going backwards and forwards uh getting things done which has been incredibly impressive so where yeah. have we got to now well, when I started the renovation project in finally in 2022, uh, all the designs were drawn up. Luckily, we had Malcolm, who is amazing. He's been in a lot of the videos as well. And the first place that I decided to start was, of course, that discovery that I made that weirdly, I didn't know that room existed, which was really another shower room. So when I went to visit the house in 2020, that door was shut and I asked the seller's agent, what is this door? And it was told to me in Italian, so maybe I misunderstood it, that it was just a closet, but I couldn't see it. When I arrived in 2021, I thought, oh my gosh, it's two bathroom. And when originally I thought it was one bathroom. So I decided to start there and Again, it was about creating then two bathrooms. I thought that was the most important thing to do was to create two bathrooms and using that new found room. So number one, we I have married into a very English family and I knew that we needed a bathtub and a good one. And that was quite some bathtub. In fact, it reminded Julie of the sorts of bathtubs that we have here at Mapperton when she found it. And she had this amazing insight, which was it did need restoring. The, the ceramic needed, yeah. needed restoring, but the decision you made was to leave the outside. Yes, exactly. And again, it was kind of controversial, I think, a little bit on some of the comments on YouTube. But now that everybody's seen it, everybody loves it. And I found that, again, sort of at a flea market, uh, had it, it had to be sort of hoisted up through a window and put in. So many of you have asked, how on earth did I buy my little Italian house? And by the way, that was during a pandemic. Well, I am absolutely thrilled to share with you the buyer's agent that I used, Property Organizers. They literally assisted me from start to finish. And it's actually really hard for me to put into words how incredibly helpful they were. They are a buyer's agent, so they work for you. 
I had an idea of my location, Tuscany, and my budget, but even if you don't have an idea of location, they can help you with that. Property organizers sent me some options they found through their specialized search network of contacts with local agents and private sellers that often aren't on the market yet. Once I narrowed it down, I booked a trip to Italy to meet one of their property consultants and we viewed the homes together in Tuscany and all within my budget. All of their consultants, great news, speak English because at that time in 2020, I didn't speak any Italian and there is no extra cost than what you would pay for a local real estate agent. Once I found my little Italian house and my offer was accepted, they massively, massively helped me with my mortgage, opening up a bank account, translation of contracts, and the big one accompanying at the notary for the final deed, i.e. the keys to my little Italian house. Plus, there is the after sale. So during the pandemic, it was really difficult for me to get over here and see my house. So they checked on my little Italian house every single month, and they can even help you with finding the right people for your restoration. Details down below how you can start looking for your dream Italian home with property organizers. I cannot recommend them enough. So we then also decided once we found that new room to break through the wall of the main bathroom in order to create uh, that shower room. And there was a shower drain there when I discovered that room, but we then closed off the wall in that small room to create a utility room. Um, and that also gives a, gave us two separate sort of lose if you liked one with a bath and a shower and then in the other utility room that's where the we can do laundry and i can uh store things and one of the wonderful things about both the bathroom and the extra bathroom the extra lavatory yes. is that julie's house is very close to carrara which is as many people will know the world center for marble and that means that marble is everywhere. Yes. And marble is incredibly inexpensive because if you think of the cost of marble, it's really the cost of transporting it all around the world, these heavy slabs. But for you, they're just a hop and a skip. So putting a piece of marble in, which looks incredibly luxurious and wonderful, um, is, is not too expensive. No, it's not at all. And both pieces of marble that I used in the bathroom and in the utility room were secondhand. Uh, because you can find that everywhere. As far as the flooring on the first floor goes, I ended up going for wood, uh, like fake wood. They call it finto uh, legno, which is a wood effect, but it's ceramic tiles. And the Italians make amazing ceramic tiles. And the reason for that and not putting in sort of timber there uh, was because of the humidity. So I was advised to put in, and they're fantastic. I think that we're really pleased with, with the tiles. Um, then picking out the paint colors, I used a paint company called San Marco, it's Italian, and Malcolm and I decided to do the line of paint throughout the first floor. What do you think of that? The line of paint, between, oh, you mean the, the difference between the bottom and the top? Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I think that's worked really well. I think that's been one of Malcolm's great ideas for the house. He did it in the bedrooms as well, but you've also done it in the hallway. And uh, Julie was being very precise with her masking tape and um, there were little bits that came off when we when we peeled it, and I could see you going, oh, yeah. Well, but actually, you can just repair exactly, those very easily. exactly. So that, that didn't matter. But it but it looks it looks terrific. Yeah. No. So that uh, again, that was a huge renovation project that I did was that entire corridor, and its masking of the tape took so long. But I was really so pleased with the result. So once we completed the bathroom, and again, to decorate the big bathroom, I just went around Fivizano and took photos of just some interesting features, door knockers, letter boxes, blew them up, put them in black frames, and hung them. And then called on your husband to hang them and help you get the yeah. right measurements. The and measurements. The right balance between the two. I was of some use briefly <laughs> for that little He's section been... of things. And, um, but I think one of the things we've, we've got to mention is the extraordinary flea market, the place that the recuperando, the place that you've been able to go to, to find so many of the objects and pieces of furniture for yeah. the flat. It's been, it's been amazing. Sorry, house. Little Italian house, there you go. No, and speaking of that is most of the first floor is entirely all secondhand pieces, and in particular, 
the master bedroom, which uh, Nestor, our youngest, helped me put together. And it's a 19th century wrought iron four poster bed. And I found that on an online flea market, details down below. What a good design yeah. decision that you were quite pleased about. I that. was very, very pleased with that. Very pleased with Judy, that. Judy likes a bit of validation. <laughs> I do need it every so often. But even the wardrobe that I put together in the master bedroom was uh, found again at its second hand, found at a flea market, the bedside tables as well, even the lamps, the Murano glass lamps in the primary bedroom were found uh, at, a, at a flea and, market. And isn't it amazing because your house looks so smart and so stylish and well designed. And actually all the pieces that you found are much less than their equivalents from Ikea. Yeah. They're all simply things that you've picked up in, in flea markets. Yes. And in particular, what's the one that we, we keep going back to? The one, PG. So yeah, PG. I call it Deborah and PG's details down below and they've been fantastic. And that's where I found moving into the guest bedroom, uh, that is where I found those two uh, beautiful, again, iron uh, headboards, single headboards. And we've decided originally we were going to uh, cover them up, reupholster them, and we've decided to keep the features because they are beautiful. But the desk in there, as well as um, the antique brass lamp that's in there, is all secondhand. And I also do want to note the curtains that I have. You know, we wanted to have sort of this airy feel in the two bedrooms. So the linen curtains that uh, you see in both bedrooms, those were found on Etsy and they were made in Poland. Uh, which is fantastic. So I have been able to source a lot of, uh, I think, different furnishings from around the world. Even in the corridor, that uh, runner carpet is uh, was shipped all the way from Turkey. And again, it's a vintage, it's a vintage rug. But occasionally, IKEA does come in incredibly usefully, doesn't it? Yes, the rugs in the guest bedroom are IKEA rugs. So those that you would never know, and no. and I think IKEA does really good woven rugs, natural fabric rugs. Mm -hmm. And I checked, and those two rugs are actually made in Poland. So there you go. Um, I did check that. Plus, there's a piece of downstairs furniture, isn't there? Yeah. So we're going to move down to the downstairs, and that's one of my most recent renovation projects. And I just recently did the sitting room, and. That room I've done entirely on my own. Of course, upstairs, I had lots of help because I wasn't able to travel to Italy as often as I wanted to. Number one, it was still tricky uh, because of the pandemic. And number two, we were busy here at Mapperton having just opened, reopened back up to the public, having been closed for pretty much almost two years. There was a lot going on. So I was able to do... Uh, the sitting room and I feel that I was I took skills from here because I'm in a renovation project just through that door there the muniment room the archive room and Lee has taught me very good painting techniques and Barry as well this means that Julie has been, been building up a full roster of decorating skills and we're quite certain that soon she'll be opening up her own consulting design <laughs> decorating service so keep a lookout down below. Yeah. What's, what's the website going to be? I don't know. I'll have to think of that. Next video. Next video. But I've learned, especially in the sitting room, I needed to uh, first and foremost wash the walls, then take all the nails out, fill in the nails, then sand the walls and the ceiling. And only after that can you start to put the coats of paint on. And once that was done, and that took 48 hours. Uh, I was able to furnish it with the bits of furniture that we do have, but I still have yet to put pictures in place. And that's where you're really good. You uh, are good at putting pictures up. I'm, I am good for something, <laughs> hanging pictures. Um, and, um, and so the, the sitting room is now done. I know that you've got a cupboard going in, mm -hmm. in the corner still, yes. but there is one big thing still to go. Well, there's two. I know what big thing you're talking about. Oh, so. Yeah. Uh, my next trip out will be the terrace. So the terrace is next up once I hang all the pictures in the sitting room and then begins the biggie, which won't start until 2024. And that is the kitchen. The kitchen. I actually quite like the kitchen as it is. I think it really reflects the mm -hmm. very simple way in which people in the town lived 
without many appliances, yeah, um, with all of the things on display because there aren't lots of drawers, right? Um, and we're going to keep using, that using fabric, terracotta, yes, um, tiling. I quite like it. Yeah, so we're going to keep that look. So it will be very open, um, not closed off. Uh, kind of like in here, we've got a lot of drawers. Um, it'll be open, it'll have the curtain, but I'm just going to make it just a little bit more authentic Italian and I'm not gonna give it away. But kitchen renovations start soon, but prior to that uh, is the terrace and that's a fun one. And I've already um, am gearing up to head out to Italy in a few weeks time to start the terrace. And is that gonna be done in time for the summer? Is there gonna be a hot tub? on the terrace for those no. late summer evenings. No. There's not okay. going to be a hot tub, I'm afraid, but okay. I think you're going to be very pleased with what Malcolm and I so have. Shall I ask any questions no. or is it all a big surprise? It's all a big surprise. What okay. Malcolm and I have pulled together. So um, yeah, I, any comments that you have, um, do let me know. One thing I do want to mention before uh, we sort of sign off here is, you know, I do take my time scouring through these flea markets and I'll be doing an entire video about my flea market finds, in particular in both the primary bedroom and the guest bedroom. The maps on the wall in the guest bedroom were found by Malcolm. He has a beady little eye. They were a euro each. And in the uh, primary bedroom, those uh, botanical prints were found at the Fivizano Antiques Market. And then I was able to take them to this amazing framer up in a nearby village called Filetto. And I go there all the time now because they're brilliant at really uh, precisely framing uh, these, these pictures exactly how I want them to look. And that to me, I think pictures are important to both you and they I. Are. They are indeed. And what's also important is that Julie gives me a little bit of credit for the things that I found at flea markets. Yes. I know you were coming on to that, weren't you? In yes. These, in these credits. Um, uh, a couple of pictures. Yes, a couple of pictures. Yep. A couple of a landscape in particular, and also fine bowl that is hanging on the wall. Both Here. in the kitchen. Yeah. So you might, so stay tuned. I, I don't I want have, to give it away. I have contributed. But you have absolutely Just contributed. A bit. And those are in the kitchen. So when I do a, my, start my kitchen up. renovation, you'll, you're, you'll link to my channel. I will definitely link to your channel. Anyway, thank you everybody. And I hope you enjoy this video. It's been a whirlwind of, gosh, uh, three years from pretty much when I bought my little Italian house to having completed now the entire first floor and the sitting room, but there's still lots more to go and I'm excited. Bye everybody. Oh yeah, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment down below.